What's up, navigation traders? I wanted to do a quick video to give you an update on what happened today and what we're looking at going forward. So, as you know, we had some unprecedented moves in the market today. I mean, the Dow at one point was down over 1,600 points. We've never seen a drop of that magnitude in one day ever from a point standpoint. Now, remember, the, the index is much higher than it's ever been as well. So we've, we've seen these types of moves on a percentage basis, but as far as overall point drops, uh, a lot of records have been set today as far as this down move. We're looking at a chart right now, the S&P 500. You can see, obviously, we were down about 60 points on Friday. And then on top of that, you know, at one point down about 160 points in the S&P. Uh, it's down about 136 is kind of where it settled after the, uh, after the close. So the question is, what, is this, what does this mean to us? Uh, what does this mean to our portfolio? And you know, I've been talking about, in every weekly update, I talk about the velocity of a down move can be much greater than that of an up move. And the analogy I use is the market takes the stairs up, but takes the elevator down. And that's exactly what ha has happened here. You can see we've grinded higher, grinded higher. In this, in you know, the first part of this year, I mean, it almost felt like the market was crashing up, but now we're seeing what can happen when things start to move the other way. So that's why it's so critical to keep that short delta in your portfolio. You know, I talk about this every weekly update. Make sure since we're selling premium, you've got to keep short delta in your portfolio for protection because this market is not going to continue to go up forever. And so that's what we're seeing here. But if we do a quick rundown of our positions, if you look at the euro, I mean, it had a little bit of a down move today. We've got this strangle on. You can see price is right almost dead center uh, in our, in our, in our uh, strangle here. So, so looking good there. With the, with the ES, we did put on a, a new iron condor uh, in this uh, market today. So if we take a look at that one first, you can see with this big down move, it's still within our range. So we're still, we're still okay there. Uh, the other piece that we, you know, we took out, we took off our short call vertical today and booked a, a profit on that piece. Of course, that's been rolled, so we're not profitable on that yet. But then we've also got this uh, long put vertical, which has come in nicely too. So we'll be looking to roll this tomorrow because we wanna continue to keep that short delta. What happens with these types of moves is you know you may think that you have enough short delta and what happens on this big move it eats up a lot of those short delta because you're taking those positions off or you're rolling them or you know everything that we we've been doing today and now we don't really have as much short delta as we'd we'd really like to have whereas we were a little bit overweighted before so that's just the uh that's just the nature of a huge move like this which is which is really unprecedented so on this uh on this long put vertical that you're looking at here you know we've 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 made over 800 of the over of the 1062 of max profit so we're going to be looking to roll that and continue to keep that short delta on uh for that position if we look at nat gas still sitting good here what you'll see because of the spike in implied volatility and everything even if your price is centered you'll see the profit line may have moved down a little bit because of that implied volatility making the options more expensive but we're still in good shape in nat gas in the ZN, uh, price was hanging out down here at the lower end of our range, and with the flight to quality with stocks down, bonds jumped up, and so that recentered our position there. So we're looking really good on that one. On uh, soybeans, uh, still got this iron condor, not a huge move in soybeans, so looking okay there. In wheat, we've got these two iron condors on, both the price is in, within range on both of these. Uh, we're actually, I, was, I did the calculation on, on wheat and we're actually profitable in wheat now. So once we take these two off, we'll actually close out this wheat position for a profit, assuming we don't have some crazy move in the grains. Uh, in DIA, you know, huge, huge move in the Dow. So, you know, these, these short call verticals, which were originally part of iron condors, have finally come in nicely. So we'll be looking to roll those, you know, potentially tomorrow or sometime this week. So we've got that one with three contracts. We've got this one with four. Uh, the market's closed right now, so don't don't pay attention to the profit line. That's gonna that's gonna come back to where it needs to be when the market opens tomorrow. But we'll be looking to roll these. You know, we we we've been kind of rolling these as they've been going against us, and now we'll roll them as they're going for us. 
and, and give us that ability to get back to profitability in some of these that we've been holding for that short delta. We do have a, a full iron condor in, in DIA and, and it did blow through the uh, lower break even on that one. So we'll be looking to adjust that one tomorrow. So look for that. Uh, sometimes when, when you're in the, in the presence of a huge move like this, um, the markets get a little bit wide. So it does get hard to fill your orders. So you've got to put in limit orders. Absolutely do not use market orders. Uh, use limit orders and let price come to you. When these, when we're having these massive swings like we saw today, you just need to put in the price that you want to get filled at, and let the market come to you. And and that's why you know I was trying to get filled on an adjustment to this, and I didn't get filled even though price you know blew through that break even point. But don't panic. You've just got to stay patient. Let the market come to you. Things will settle down. Markets will tighten back up as far as the bid ask spreads and, and it'll get easier to get filled, but you've got to stay patient. And this is one of the key reasons why we want to keep our position size small because of big moves like this and why we want to keep that short delta. If we keep going, we look at EWW, you know, price is way up here. It's, it's come down nice and centered here. Uh, not as much profit as we would have if, if implied volatility didn't spike, but we're looking good in EWW. Same with EWZ, you know, price made a big move down, but still well within our range there. FXI, the Chinese large cap, price is way down here, and now, now price has come, come into center, so we're looking good there. GLD, sorry, my dog Vix is barking in the background. Uh, GLD uh, popped up just a quarter percent, not a big move in gold. You know, a lot of times if stocks are selling off, you'll see a, an uptick in gold, but we didn't really see too much there, but we're really nice and centered in our iron condor in GLD. IBM, this is one that we rolled, you know, with the pop-up in implied volatility. Uh, you can see we are down, but still well within our range, so just playing the waiting game in IBM. IWM had a, had a lot of short delta in here, uh, along with this iron condor, so it did uh, blow through the downside of our iron condor. Again, don't pay attention to the profit line with the market closed right now. Uh, but we did book a, uh, a piece of that on our short call vertical today. So we got out of that. Uh, obviously could have made a little bit more had we held it, but we didn't know the market was gonna continue to the downside like it did. But, we'll, but what we'll look to do in IWM is we will look to add another iron condor with this spike up in implied volatility. Uh, we'll continue to keep that short delta in our portfolio. Uh, Nvidia. So this is an earnings play. You know, we're, we got we got stuck on this, right? I mean, the the market with that huge move down, we're gonna probably take a loss on this unless things happen to turn around and we have a V bottom and just fires back up. But uh, but we'll hold it a, a few more days, see if we can't get back to maybe break even or 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 make back a little of that. I don't want to take it off on a huge down day. Might as well wait for a little bit of an up day, see if we can't pare down some of the losses on that one. Uh, and obviously we needed that in our portfolio for long delta and it's a historically a very good setup when it comes to earnings plays but of course with a with a huge move down in the market like this uh, not too many stocks we're seeing we're seeing any upside so uh, we'll probably take a loss on that but but look to probably get out once we see a, a little bit of an up move in the queues so we've we've we had a lot of short delta in the queues we've got uh, you know two of these short call verticals uh, that were previous iron condors come in really nicely so we'll be looking to roll those tomorrow or into the rest of this week so we've got this one let me reset this real quick uh, so we've got this one here and uh, so you, you can see we've we pulled a nice uh, bit of chunk of chunk of profit in this piece so we'll roll that to keep that short delta along with this one kind of a similar just a little slightly different strikes uh, but we'll look to continue to to manage that one by rolling. Now this one here, which this is the loan position we still have in our other account, you know it's come all the way back in here. So if we get a little bit more of a down move, we'll we'll probably just close that one out and then keep these these other two verticals in place. Uh, Tesla, same story as Nvidia. Nvidia. I mean, this was an earnings play. We just got you know it got caught in this this huge downdraft. So maybe just look for a little bit of a pop up. And, uh, and get out of that one and, and take a small loss there. XLU, the utilities, still very centered. So price was up here, but it moved down a little bit. Still in good shape there. And XLV, so, so this is one where 
we've got two two pieces of this on. We've got this short call vertical, which was part of the iron condor, and price has come back nicely in that. I was trying to get filled on that, did not get filled today. So hopefully we, we kind of stay stay here to lower and we'll get out of that and book a little profit on that piece. And then this one here, if it continues to move lower, we will need to adjust. Again, I was trying to get filled here, but but bid ask spreads were so wide with this huge move that we didn't get filled. So we'll continue to monitor that and make adjustments as necessary there. XLP, <coughs> excuse me, XLP is the oil related ETF that we put on in on the trade of the week this morning and uh, still very centered even though even with that three plus percent down move we're still well within our range but with that huge spike in implied volatility you're going to see your position down some so nothing to do there except for play the waiting game and in XRT uh, it's still in good shape here uh, just need a little bit of an up move there and some um, implied volatility contraction to benefit both of these uh, you know, if we do continue to move, we'll, we'll continue to roll down our calls to adjust those positions, but still an okay shape there. Now, the other thing is, you know, with implied volatility so high, we do want to be adding, with whether it's with adjustments or entering new positions. So what I like about our portfolio is we're very diversified and I don't want to get too overweighted because this thing could continue to move down or it could shoot back up. And I don't want to put ourselves in a position where we're too overweighted. But, you know, depending on where you're at with your portfolio, you know, now is definitely a time to be putting on positions with the with a huge spike up in implied volatility. You're going to see most stocks and ETFs where the implied volatility or the percentile in the rank is pinned at 100. Now, keep in mind, that doesn't mean that's the highest that implied volatility can go, uh, but it is a measure of where it has been. So you don't want to load the boat. It doesn't mean it's, it's the time to just load up and, and jump in and everything, but it is a good time to be scaling into positions, adding new positions, and that's what we will continue to do. So I hope that was helpful. Just wanted to give you an update in light of the huge, massive move that we saw today. Uh, usually we just do our kind of end of week, but I wanted to jump in here and, and give you these, give you my thoughts and details of what we're looking at for the rest of the week and how we manage situations like this. So I hope it was helpful. Talk to you soon.